Hi, my name is Christian jean Duke, and I'm an animation director in the video games industry. This time we're going to look at a single sequence of animation instead of an entire reel, with a view of providing more focus on an individual piece. So the piece we're going to look at is from an animator by the name of Kevin Sonny DeMorris. He's provided me with this combat piece of animation, which is already pretty good, but he was just looking for a little bit more feedback. So let's take a look. Okay, uh, thanks Sonny for letting me have a look at your piece of animation. So any advice I'd be giving on this is basically just to enhance this piece. This isn't to say that there's anything wrong with it, it's just maybe to just give it some extra punch. Um, and these would all be things that I would speak to my animators about. Uh, this is actually a really solid piece. I really like some of the timing and some of the blocking. So let's take a look. Okay, something I like to do with combat is I always like to try and find the natural rhythm of something, you know, so um, I would encourage you to kind of push that and, you know, like one, two, three, four, especially if you have this in a game as well. Make sure you get it in there and you play it and then you kind of feel those taps and then you'll start to feel that rhythm and it really starts to help. So the first thing I notice is you've got some upper body isolation here, which looks a bit strange just because you've got all this, this movement without any kind of maybe weight going over that back leg. Um, something I always like to do as well as I always like to close down an enemy with a combat move, like A, B, C, always be closing. You always feel like when you're pushing a button that you want to be closing an enemy down. You always want to be advancing forward. It feels like if you don't move forward or if you move back, it just sometimes feels like that isn't the intention the player had. Something that I think you've done well across the, the body of your animation is you've worked on these smear frames. Um, but one thing I would recommend that you do is make sure that you focus on contact frames. So here you can see the, um, the contact frame would probably be here, but that isn't actually that far forward. So it would mean that you would have to be right up on an enemy to hit them. You could either cover this a couple of ways, doing something with a wider smear frame or, you know, something I would actually look at doing is I would take this sword maybe out a little bit further. It means that you've got a little bit of extra distance on your attack. It would also really help with the readability of what this move actually is. You'll see that with the next frame, there's quite a big leap. So that's frame 11 and then you go to frame 12 and you see it's a large leap. Now that can be okay because again, it can give you the, the sense of power and speed. Um, so you need to make sure that the, the frames after that sell the fact it's moved that quickly. You see, if you focus on this upper body, you'll see that the sword and the arms and the head and the torso are all very kind of static together. So you always want to try and keep momentum going. So, and also like you see the way this back foot is raised here. It's like he stays on his toes for way too long. Whereas I feel like he would raise up, maybe he'd lean back and then you would start to come down and then you come down with, with the thunder, you know, you come down with like a lot more weight. But what you do here is you kind of go forward, like through that frame, and then you come back. And the diagonal move is nice. I think that is nice and readable. You're just gonna be careful of the overswing because when you overswing, it starts to draw your attention to places you don't necessarily need to. And it also makes it hard to go to the next move. You see this line, this kind of center through the character? If you can kind of keep the head closer to that center, you'll find you'll get a cleaner move and it'll mean that there's not as much movement happening like either way. And even if you were looking at this from the back or from the side, it will just look like it's a lot cleaner. You see the way you kind of move here and you move your right leg and the arm all at the same time. So, you know, maybe you could have that foot placing here, like a stronger kind of pose. You look away from the character and that's partly because of how much you're overswinging. So I think if you were to pull that overswing back, again, it would set you up nicely for the next move, which is the jump. Always kind of keep it down, you know, so it's not killing the momentum there. You boom, and then you flick back up. That will give you a really nice extended pose and you could really extend this out. And if your feet were locked there when it was doing it, it would really kind of give a nice line showing where the line of action is and showing where he's gonna go. With this particular move, it's kind of like a side flip. So what I do is I'd actually have it kind of pivot round the head and you kind of do it, but then you see you move the head a little bit further and then you can kind of pop out of it. But it's almost like you want to do more of a tuck here. And also look, be careful of your legs. The legs are doing a lot of movement. Start to lean into that arc. Try and have the character always looking where they're trying to land, maybe looking down at the floor or at the enemy. Always try and maintain some form of focus because it then stabilizes the character a little bit more. 
you you kind of have this turn here then you don't you stop the rotation then over this frame look you rotate the shoulders but again you kill the arms again you want to have those arms drag back ready for that final hit so then you come down and i think you maybe overextended the smear here i would probably maybe have them come down either a bit quicker this start to come down just a little bit here again it's like kind of meeting in the middle instead of just kind of hanging in the air and you see the way the head kind of stays at that level you know you either want to have it raising up or starting to come down something i noticed and i couldn't work out what was bothering me until i really started to to think about it and Again, as I've said, I love what you've done with the smear frames, but I think this one in particular seems a bit strange. And the reason I think it seems a bit strange is because you've got this little sword, you come down and it extends it, makes it long, but then you've got this, this line here, and because it's a small sword and you're coming down, it's, it's like it's got this extendo sword sort of thing. And what I would actually recommend that you do, which I think would work a lot better, is if you extended the smear frame kind of up there you know so it was doing that so it would come down and it would be like Whoa, bam, and then you could shrink it and I feel like you could do that with your smear frame instead and it would actually make this move a lot more um, powerful and it would give a bit more of a punch the, you've got some weight in this so what I would do is with the settle is I'd make sure that you carry that weight through to the settle because at this point this character is holding this heavy sword or what you're saying is a heavy sword and he's holding it and it's like it just stops you could have the the hips start to come down like start to come down a bit here but have the torso still start to rotate up then you could have the head looking up then bring the sword back into that position so i think in conclusion the things that i'd like you to focus on is be careful of things like isolation try and continue momentum on so always be closing Try and keep the head stable. So when you're doing flips and hits, try and keep it in that central kind of where the weight is. Careful of too much symmetrical movement. Again, like if you're taking a swing, put the leg down first, then that gives you the power to swing. Be careful of your smear frames. Um, just make sure that you're using them appropriately. And also you can maybe just add a bit more bounce and everything into your settle. But overall, it's a great animation, um, good job and uh, I can't wait to see more of the stuff that you do. Good luck. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hopefully by me sharing these insights and this information, this will also encourage you to share back with us too. And my name is Christian Jonju. This has been Gameplay Animation Show Review. Until next time, take care and uh, good luck. I'm trying to blaze, the norm of the bike, the